Welcome to Talking with the Experts. This is where we discuss great ideas to take your business to the next level. How do we know these ideas work? Well, it's because we're talking with business owners who are using these ideas. Business owners who have years of experience and expertise. All things business by business owners for business owners. And now, here is your host, Rose Davidson. In episode 425, Catherine Lamb discusses with us how to prevent imposter syndrome from damaging your business. Sitting down with these accelerator questions. So if you're trying to move forward with your business or with yourself, what are the questions that you need to address, that you need to answer in order to do that? And who are you going to ask? So for example, if it is around strategy, then are you going to talk to somebody so you can learn about strategy? Or if you want to learn about marketing, how are you going to do that? So it is making a list of those questions. And a lot of us tend to avoid that because I think that some of them feel we always feel embarrassed. We think, well, it's such a basic question. They're going to think I should know that. But once you've got it down, you can then find as well that once you start to ask one, you get the answers to the other. So it's building up your knowledge, which will therefore build up your level of self-confidence. Talking with the experts. Hi, I'm Rose Davidson from Talking with the Experts. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Global Glamping Charities for their valued support. Global Glamping Charities, solving homelessness in all its forms. Reach out to them at globalglamping.org. Do you love your podcast and dislike the editing and uploading to the various platforms? Would you like to spend this time with your family and friends or work on your business? Podcast editing doesn't have to be a chore. Talking with the experts partners with podcasters who need help with audio and content editing. If you'd like to know more, contact me, Rose Davidson, using the link showing now or send me a private message. Hello and welcome to Talking with the Experts. I'm your host, Rose Davidson from rosedavidson.com. Talking with the Experts is about all things business by business owners for business owners. You can find it on all good podcasting, streaming platforms and on YouTube. I just need to ask you before I bring my next guest on, do you suffer from imposter syndrome? Yes, quite often. And most women, it's mainly women that suffer from that. I think it's because it's the way we're brought up. Um, I think that, uh, it, yeah, it's more prevalent in females for some strange reason. Now, we all know that imposter syndrome is a fear of being found out and often the catalyst is a change within the business. And my next guest, Catherine Lamb, is going to be discussing with us how we can prevent imposter syndrome from damaging our business. Welcome, Catherine, and thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you very much for having me. It's nice to be with you. Yeah, and so tell me, how did you get into doing what you're doing? Now, you've got quite an impressive resume which I didn't read out you you are a speaker at uh, Fortune 500 and um, FTSC 100 companies Fortune whatever they are what's FTSE I'm a bit so um... so FTSE 100 is what's quoted on the London Stock Exchange and Fortune 500 is um, the US so you know big companies I've spoken at about imposter syndrome yes. um, and so my background got a very impressive resume then well done yeah so how, how do we <laughs> how do we get um Mm. Firstly, what what triggers imposter syndrome and how can we not let it trigger us as people so much? So I think the what I've discovered, so my background is um, as well as having a coaching qualification from Henley Business School, I have a background of over 15 years in recruitment and I found that a lot of my clients had imposter syndrome. I have it as well. And I experienced it when my change was leaving recruitment and building up my own business. And change seems to be a catalyst for it. And although we talk about the feelings, which is that feeling like a fraud or feeling like an imposter, but the change comes because there's a conflict between who we are and how we see ourselves versus how we think we need to be in order to be successful. And so that produces that feeling of I need to act or behave in a different way. And that makes me feel like a fraud. And then that also brings in the wider question, which is 
how much is it the case that you you are being inauthentic versus how much is it just unfamiliar to you? So could you, you know, if you carry on with those behaviours, are you going to grow into the role? So it's a huge area, if you like, but it almost comes down to a, a change in our identity. Yeah, I, I, I do agree with that. I, um, I've i often found that when I've had to change, you know, roles within, you know, um, either government organisations or within a particular organisation, you think when, you, when you've stepped up to the next level, perhaps, you think, oh, do I really deserve this? Do I, um, you know, am I going to be okay? You know, uh, am I going to be able to handle all the pressure and all those sorts of things? So I, I do understand that, that change is a big catalyst to, to imposter syndrome, but there are other things too that can cause uh, imposter syndrome too. You know, like, um, oh, I think it's just lack of confidence, perhaps. I think it's lack of confidence. But then if we look at the behaviours around it, so the behaviours around it are how we recognise in ourselves and recognise other people is this need for perfectionism mm. um, or feeling like an expert or feeling I've got to be Superman, Superwoman, because it was interesting your introduction, because men also experience imposter syndrome. And the reason we associate it with women is because the study that was first done, um, I think it was in 1977 by um, Suzanne Imes and Pauline Clance, it just happened to be with women. So it's always been tagged around women. But I have uh, worked with quite a few men who experience it as well. So I don't think it's the case that we have it all the time either. I think it is, um, as you say, it's around this, it is around identity. So I think change can really cause it to happen, but I don't think it has to be, it can be there without the change. And I think it is, so for example, it's interesting you're talking about um, if you're taking a new role. And I think it is you're leaving the comfort zone of your old role where you felt like an expert. And all of a sudden the change around that is now you're back to being a learner. And we associate a, being a learner with feeling incompetent. And that feeling of incompetency brings around that fear of failure. And so it is, so it's it, it, it's all of that within that. So um, so I think that that is also part of the story. Yeah, I think that's you know, probably what I was trying to get to, but didn't as, as uh, worded as eloquently as you did. <laughs> <laughs> but I think also going back to it, you know, when you're starting off your business, um, that again is is quite it, it, you're kind of going from being an employee into running your own business, and I think then it's you start off and you're questioning your authority. You know, who am I to be saying you know I can do X, Y, or Z, and, and you know and put this forward as a business? There are other people who know much more than I do. So it's it's taking that time to work out what is your value um, and what is your distinct offering compared to other people, but also. Um, I've noticed as well as businesses grow, you might start off, you might have start off your business, for example, because you're a brilliant sales director. But as the business grows, you're bringing in more people who can do those roles. So now you need to step up a bit more. So now you're probably leaving that functional role to being, you know, you need to be a strategist. Well, if you haven't really done strategy, you're not comfortable with that. That, again, is going to you may not even recognise it is imposter syndrome, but it is that that fear of, you know, I'm now going into new territory um, and I don't feel so confident about it. So you tend to hang back and that can then cause all of your team to feel that they're being too much controlled, they're lacking autonomy and so on, because you've not given them the headspace they need in order for them to move forward. You've created, it's almost like a bottleneck within your personal growth, really. Okay, so how can we, um, you know, uh, by step all that stuff and or, or alleviate the symptoms what can we do okay so I think that it's around um if we think around the perfectionism you know when you go in and you're you're sticking too much to process and I think that can happen when you're running your own business but also if you have joined a startup um, it's the case that people have got very little time to kind of give you feedback about how well you're doing. And so therefore you start to get too caught up in process. You feel the process can save you because um, you're not going to make a mistake. It's going to help you avoid making certain things. So I think that around perfectionism, it's a lot of this really is thinking about it and addressing questions for yourself. So around perfectionism, a question is what would make this effortless? And how will I know when it's good enough? Because that way, then it puts an end in sight. You're not constantly going over the same task. And also, as a business owner, what is my role? What kind of business do I want? 
what do I want my customers to say about me? What do I want my staff to say about me? Because I think a habit we can fall into as a business owner is that we can see it as we want to um, avoid errors rather than go for insights. And again, if you're avoiding errors, you're keeping your business small because you're not thinking about growing it, whereby there is that risk involved in it and that learning involved in it. So I think, again, it is having that self-awareness around that. Um, and that if we think about, as well, you know, being an expert, you know, we need to drop that idea. If you're, if you're setting up your business, you're now a learner. And I think that's a much less judgmental way of seeing yourself than is I've got to be an expert because an expert we see as being success. And we all know the opposite of success is that dreaded failure <laughs> that we really want to avoid. So it is it is clarifying who am I? How do I see myself? How do others see me? And how will I know that I'm moving things forward? So it is think about all of those questions around it. And again, another behavior is this superman, superwoman, whereby I've got to do it all to a very high standard. So again, what can you delegate to somebody else? And by that, I mean, changing the value around it. So for example, if you're doing something, if you're doing a task day to day, you're like you're doing your marketing, but actually you could delegate that to um, an outside company who's going to charge less than you charge yourself out at. Mathematically, you know, that doesn't make sense around the value. So it's thinking about it in a different way to what you can do. But it is, I think, most of all, thinking about how are you going to accelerate your learning? So what you can do is to mitigate it rather than avoid it. It is thinking about, so what are the accelerator questions I need to answer in order to get me quickly out of this uncomfortable learner area and more towards my comfort zone and feeling more like the expert I used to be? Mm. Yeah, you're right too, that um, yeah, perfectionism is a great part of being an imp- or feeling like an imposter because if you don't uh, you know, do things and you make a mistake, you think, oh, my God, they're going to find out that I'm not as good as I said I was. So, yeah, you're right. And then when we start our businesses, of course, we think that we are the expert in whatever field that we and then we learn from other people that we actually not the expert and we have a long way to go before we can even be considered an expert. So I can see where um, the imposter syndrome can come in. And and, and uh, you're quite right. Men do have it. I was just saying that primarily women have it. I think it's just that we, we're more known for it and men keep it more hidden. I think maybe perhaps that's probably a better way of putting it because <laughs> they don't want to feel like, you know, that they are being judged by others. They just want to be known as, you know, I'm the he-man and I can do everything. <laughs> yeah, I think you're absolutely right there. <laughs> Yeah, so I guess what are some tactics that we could adopt to, um, you know, get ourselves out of this? Because imposter syndrome can cause a lot of anxiety and a lot of depression in, in some people. And so there's got to be something that we can do, some tactics that we can adopt that uh, can get us out of, you know, getting so far down the, the rabbit hole. Yes, I mean, I think it is, it's raising our self-awareness around it. And I think one of the things is that it's almost changing how we view imposter syndrome, because um, there's a very good book by Victoria Young called The Secret Thoughts of Successful Women. She actually wanted to call it Successful People, but her publisher said, no, 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 you've got to be women. Mm -hmm. And she talks about the fact about a feeling of shame, which I think is true, which is that feeling in deep down inside us, she refers to it as our crusher, which is that feeling of, I'm just not good enough. I'm not worthy. um, And it's a shameful feeling. And all of these elaborate behaviours, if you like, um, that come with imposter syndrome, you know, the wanting to be an expert, the perfectionism, you know, I've got to be Superman, Superwoman. That's all designed to protect us from those feelings. So it is working out what is um, my crusher? What is that message deep down inside that I'm avoiding is the first thing. So it is sitting with that discomfort. And I remember after reading her book, I actually did spend a couple of days thinking about that because it didn't pop into my head immediately because it's quite deep because it is such a horrible feeling um, and worked on that. And I think then as well, it is around that it is um, sitting down with these 
accelerator questions. So if you're trying to move forward with your business or with yourself, what are the questions that you need to address, that you need to answer in order to do that? And who are you going to ask? So for example, if it is around strategy, then are you going to talk to somebody so you can learn about strategy? Or if you want to learn about marketing, how are you going to do that? So it is making a list of those questions. And a lot of us tend to avoid that because I think that some of them feel We always feel embarrassed. We think, well, it's such a basic question. They're going to think I should know that. But once you've got it down, you can then find as well that once you start to ask one, you get the answers to the other. So it's building up your knowledge, which will therefore build up your level of self-confidence. It's also having um, a good part of that, therefore, is having that good plan. Once you've got a good, clear plan, it stops that awful feeling of wake up at three o'clock in the morning, whereby... Um, you've got the voice in your head saying you need to do this, you need to do that, or you're just not good enough because you've sat down and you've addressed that. And also having um, mentors. Now, when you've got your own business, it can be difficult to have mentors because you just think, well, where am I going to get them from? But they don't have to be official mentors. You can actually have what you might call unofficial mentors. So you might have a friend, for example, who is good at marketing or, you know, somebody else who is good on sales. It might be the case that you meet with them for a coffee or you go for a walk. And those are, in your mind, your unofficial mentors, whereby you've got certain things you can go to and ask them for advice about it. So I think that is a good plan to have, because when you start your own business, it's really lonely. Oh, yeah. And you feel quite isolated. And you are thinking all of a sudden you realize all the people that, you know, hung around the drinks machine in the office, you know, pre-COVID, those people aren't available to you anymore. So how are you going to build up a good support network and who do you need to have in that in order to help take you forward and help you feel more confident? Because sometimes the confidence is around a lack of knowledge rather than just, you know, the self-belief. And I think also, as well as that, it is the case of, as I say, around um, getting um, advice as well. So, and you could go back to people who've worked with you in the past over this, because it is trying to work out how do other people see you? So it's going back to people you've worked with in the past, clients or other workers. What do they think was great about you in your job? What difference do they think you made? It's very nice to hear that, to boost you up, particularly when you're starting out on that lonely road of doing your business for the first time. You need to be reminded by them of, you know, why you thought you were good enough to do it. So it is it's pulling in all of that emotional support. And also a good thing to do is. People don't like giving feedback. So I saying, I can't bear to give negative feedback. We always feel very uncomfortable about that. But you can ask people for advice because people love giving advice. So, you know, you can always say to um, friends, colleagues, you know, if you're part of a network, other people in business, you know, what's your perspective on this? If you were me, what would you do? So therefore, you're pulling in the advice, the resources. And a lot of it is the support that you need, because I think it is about support because it's not... There is no silver bullet whereby I can say, do you know what? It's gone now. You've sorted it out. But I think that by sitting with the uncomfortable, recognising it and recognising it is such a difference um, between just hiding away from it and also seeing the imposter syndrome. I, how I how I found it helpful for myself is to see it rather than something that I was frightened of and I hide away from I almost see it as like it's the little child inside me that actually wants reassurance so if you think about a child waking up at three o'clock in the morning um, rather than hiding away from it in bed you would you would think about how are you going to comfort it what are you going to say to reassure it so how are you going to reassure that voice in your head and a lot of it is by um, with one of my clients once I talked about the fact well actually it is that it is that crush is that feeling of shame they actually spoke to in a very reassuring way which is I know you've got my best interests at heart but I can handle this situation I know you're looking out for me I know you want to protect me so you're not seeing as an enemy or something to be feared you hide away from you're now seeing as something actually that needs reassurance so how are you going to reassure that voice I think it is that is a big change that you can make in yourself as as to how you see it so you're not so scared of it yeah I think the subconscious has um uh, uh, you know it it has a lot to answer for sometimes (laughs) um yeah and you're right you know use your your conscious um 
voice to to reassure your subconscious that you you know you're not going to die you're not going to skin your knees you're not going to get grazed elbows or anything you know it's okay you can walk the path uh, um and but we it, it in the moment sometimes it's a bit hard you know you, you don't think to do that in that particular moment but you know but if you write those feelings down and um and then you can go back and re address them later um sometimes it's good to have a note pad and a pen beside your bed because if you wake up with that fear you could probably write that down and then in the morning when you're a, a bit clearer you, you might be able to address that and, and speak to that horrible shitty itty bitty devil on your shoulder that's giving you such a hard time <laughs> and I think actually that's a good point because I think that um I would say it's a task I've given some of my clients is to make a note of how when they notice they've been more confident um, because I think that's quite a nice thing to do. So, you know, when a situation comes along and they just feel that awful sense of, but they do it anyway, just to, you know, put, almost like just put a mark on a bit of paper, just count up how many times that happens. You'll find over a period of time that reduces. Mm. And that's quite a nice way of doing it, just to be aware of the fact, actually, you know, I'm counting it down rather than it's going up. I think it's quite a good way to do it. Yeah, and I think... And and you I you discussed early on in our conversation about just be being aware of of how you're feeling and and those horrible thoughts that yet that you know that we all have i think and, be, and writing them down because you you can't remember everything so writing them down yes. at the time is is probably a, well in my mind anyway is a good idea to do because um you know you can you can go back and look at them and and know what triggered you at that particular time I think also as well, you made a good point where you said, well, you know, it's in that moment. There is that awful moment, isn't there, whereby if you're in a meeting, you're about to speak and you suddenly think, I can't, you overthink it. I think that um, it is reframing it. There's a very interesting study done. I think it's done by um, Harvard. And it was about how the feelings of excitement are exactly similar to the feelings of fear. So you might wake up in the morning, you know, your palms are sweaty, your heart's racing and it could be, well, it's actually, it's my first party since lockdown. But equally, it could be, oh, I've got a really big meeting today and I'm very nervous about it. So if you fra reframe that, the, 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 the physical reaction to it is the same. But if you reframe that, actually, this feeling is excitement. So how can you reframe it around the fact that you're always being sucked into it? So I think that's another useful tool mm. and technique that you can use around it. Yeah, my friend, um, she's into all these the mindset that she she discusses mindset and mind and she mind shift is her is her way of doing things. And yeah, it's just about reframing what um what you think and and how you feel to get them to align to each other. So yeah, you're right. It's it's but it's it takes practice. It's not something that you can just do overnight. It's no, you're right. I think you're right. I think it is the case that you actually, it is almost like a commitment to managing your imposter syndrome rather than um, a hope it will go away. <laughs> no, it never goes away, trust me. <laughs> well, I say, although actually, I would say now that I would say it doesn't, I would describe now the fact that I have more imposter moments rather than I live an imposter life. And, I, and yeah. for me, that's quite a big change. So I think, and I think that, that if you can aim for that, then that is a real positive. And also when it comes, it's not that, are you almost in the past associated, it's that sudden wave of nausea that would come over you whereby it would just suddenly hit you in the moment and you were just frozen on the spot. And so now they are, they are fewer, those moments, and also it's not as overwhelming as it used to be. Yeah, same here. I think... Um, uh... I don't know. I don't know what's happened in my life just lately, but I'm much more positive. I don't have, but you know, on the weekends sometimes I just think to myself, "Who am I? Why? Why is this good stuff happening? Do I deserve this? You know, what have I done to deserve this?" And then I have to turn that little monster around and say, "Yes, you've worked hard <laughs> to get what, what you do." But it's yeah, you're right. It, it, it's again, it's that reframing of the of the bad thing, turning a bad thing into a good thing. Yes, yes. And I think also it is, it's almost like that fear, isn't it, that the good thing is going to come to an end. And I would say that it will because life changes, but you can handle it when it does. And I think that's a reassuring message to, to give yourself. Absolutely, absolutely. Have you written any 
books yourself on this topic? I'm so bad for not reading bios. It's really why do I <laughs> No, get I haven't written write? any books myself on this topic. No, I've just read a lot around it because most of my all of my clients come to me because they are experiencing the symptoms of imposter syndrome. And what's interesting are how the trends around it change. So for example, um, imposter syndrome now is something we're much more familiar with, but also how people recognize it in different ways. So now people come to me saying, you know what, I need to, I need much more gravitas. That's what I need now. And again, that is part of it, but it's interesting how it, it are, the behaviour we're seeing around it, you know, that changes, you know, it changes as the trends change. So I think that's quite an interesting thing, you know, so it might be confidence, it might be gravitas, but it is still all part of that. Yeah. Yes. And I, where can people find you, Catherine, if they wanted to work with you or to find out more about imposter syndrome and how they can, you know, leap over it? So I'm on LinkedIn um, and I post regularly on that. They can find me under Catherine Lamb um, on LinkedIn. And then also on my website, which is um, spectrum360.co.uk. I'm on that. And if they go on to the contacts page, um, they can reach out to me through that, send me an email. And I always respond to emails or send me a text or phone me. I'm very happy to have a conversation about that. And I'm also on Facebook as well under Catherine Lamb or under Spectrum 360 coaching career management. So I'm always open to a conversation. Um, what can they find on your website, Catherine? So on my website, they can find out um, the courses that I do. So um, they can find out um, tips and techniques about managing imposter syndrome, which is what we've discussed today. Um, my, I do a weekly blog that goes up onto my website. Um, and that also goes on to LinkedIn as well. And then um, information about how to contact me. But also, as I say, it is about how to manage imposter syndrome and the courses that I do around uh, career change or around stepping up into a new management or leadership role, because that's when it can happen, you know, when we first start doing that change. Terrific. Love it. So if you want to know anything about imposter syndrome, head over to Catherine Lem's website and um, she'll have all the good goss over there. Catherine, before we go today, would you like to share with us some uh, wonderful words of wisdom? I think it is, as I said to you um, earlier on, I think the, the most important takeaway is you might experience imposter syndrome. You might have an imposter syndrome moment, but you don't have to live an imposter syndrome life. Mm, that's very, there is, very there is light at the end of the tunnel and you can manage it and you can reduce it. And it does go over time. It is just thinking about... Who do I want to be and living by your values much more? Agreed totally, 100%. Yeah. Catherine, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for sharing with us today. And I look forward to talking to you again very soon. Okay, thanks very much for having me. You've been listening to Talking With The Experts, hosted by Rose Davidson. Make sure you have a look at our back catalogue over at talkingwiththeexperts.com. And be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss out on any episode. We look forward to your company next time. Talking with the experts.